We open on a group of four people at a dinner party having a toast. Thank you all so very much for coming down. This takes place on a Caribbean island where a civil war has been going on, but for now that's just the backdrop. The host is a doctor who has come up with an experimental method of organ transplant, and the other three are his patients. Regina is a singer who has had her vocal cords replaced. Your operation saved my smoky, eternally hypnotic singing voice, to quote one of my more recent reviews. Joe, a star football player, has a new knee, with JJ having a new pair of corneas. Anyway, there's a purpose to this meeting. You're down here to be given the opportunity to invest in a miracle. He takes them down to the basement where he's been keeping a body, which he has somehow been keeping alive so he can harvest organs from it, and that's how each of these people got their transplants. Kind of like a reverse Frankenstein. This guy isn't even cold yet. That's the miracle. Adam is three years dead. So he only has to use a small amount of this potion, and he's got a ton of it in reserve. And I will keep him fresh until every cell has been used. But it also makes the transplanted body parts completely compatible with its new owner. That's very convenient. Now every corpse can be an eternal flesh bank for the living. <laughs> Care to invest? I mean, I would totally trust this guy. Yes. yes. Yeah, just leave that up there and walk away. Nothing bad could happen. Like these two idiots fooling around and knocking all of it into the tank. Oh! Oh! Ah! Yeah, this isn't gonna end well. Everybody knows how you broke all the old records this last season. Wait till you tell them you were running on a transplanted knee. A bit later, they're having another toast, and Joe mentions that his new knee is actually stronger than the other one. And that's because of the serum. It heals, and it strengthens. Does anyone else know the recipe to this little miracle? Absolutely not. The formula's locked away, where only I can get it. Meanwhile, Adam manages to get up and limp over to the barrels of serum and eventually up the stairs. While that's happening, there are explosions heard outside, and there's talk of freedom fighters. Viva, Viva la revolution! At the airport, I heard some young men chanting it as they were dragged away by police. Apparently a lot of whom have been executed. There's enough executions in this country to make Hitler jealous. Our Presidente is hardly Hitler, Joe. Oh boy. Yes, he's much, much taller. The patients get so excited about this new method of organ transplant, they start asking all sorts of questions about the possibilities. But we're dealing with a new discovery here. And we don't know all the ramifications. They've only been investors for five minutes and they're already making demands. New lungs for smokers! Now wait just a minute. Adam looks a bit like David Bowie. <laughs> anyway, he crashes the party, but doesn't get very far before getting stopped. And if this serum is powerful enough to keep this guy from rotting, it's probably strong enough to cause this here death crawl. Corpses used to sit straight up at funerals a hundred years ago, before they embalmed them. Yeah, sure, that's all that happened. Okay, pals, back to the morgue. Poor Adam, he worked so hard to get up there, and then he just gets carted right back. Notice the doctor in the background. I think he might actually realize that Joe is to blame for this. Anyway, he says he's not going to hook Adam back up to the tubes until he's figured out what happened. No more happy juice, because you've been bad. Finally, this idiot gets what's coming to him. And the doctor is just like, well, sucks to be him. Adam. He attacked. Killed Joe. The serum has heightened his senses. It's as if he can see. Meanwhile, this seems to indicate that Adam has been aware of his surroundings enough to know how the serum works. I guess he's been overhearing the doctor talk about it. Oof, there's a lovely sound. Won't be needing that anymore. The doctor wasn't kidding when he said this stuff was a miracle. I'm not going and leaving Adam unattended. Right, that corpse is our investment now. We can't have it roaming around and giving us bad press. I love that they only care about their investment, not the guy who just died or even the poor mangled guy they basically took organs from who is apparently alive and all the horrible implications of that. JJ is just done with all of this. Good evening, zombie watchers. 
<laughs> oh god, not the eyes. You know, in certain countries, that's considered a delicacy. God damn it, Red Dwarf USA. You go hang out with Joe. And then there were two. These doors were built to stop cannonballs. I don't think that a spasm corpse will get in. He's off the serum. It won't be long before he weakens. Bombs are still going off outside, and Regina asks about how the political prisoners were executed and whether or not they used lethal injection. It matters because a dead man is walking around in this house. Then she puts two and two together and realizes that Adam was one of the executed freedom fighters. You gave him the lethal injection, didn't you? You're this government's execution doctor, aren't you? He was a convicted murderer. A freedom fighter, yes. You execute the government's enemies in exchange for fresh young specimens. Weird, it's almost like she has a conscience. You're very clever, doctor. You're also what is known as a ghoul. But that doesn't last long because now she wants to know where he keeps the formula for the serum. Why? I think we should be equal owners now that we have to play cover up for those two murders tonight. She thinks she might know where it is, so... That's the dumb waiter. It goes to the old kitchen in the basement. I think we know where this is going. <laughs> I love how it looks like he's going to help her for a second and then he ends up helping Adam. So only the doctor is left now. Well, that wasn't a very dignified entrance. It turns out that the doctor was also a patient. He has Adam's heart. I had to! I was lying! You need me. I make the serum. Uh, I make the serum! Oh my god. Yeah! Well, at least he seemed to die quickly. Uh, you kind of forgot the serum there. I guess that'll do it. And now Adam is completely restored. So what does he do? Viva! La Revolution! Fight the good fight, buddy. This is a very simple and straightforward episode, but a pretty effective one, even if it rips off Reanimator a bit. Not to mention body parts. I get a kick out of just how loathsome these people are. They're just so flippant when they find out that there's a body being kept alive. Like, at no point do they wonder if he's aware or in pain or anything. Like, nothing about the horrific implications of this. They're all just like, heh, cool. It's all about the money. That's the thing about the 80s. People were really pissed off about Reaganomics, and that resulted in a lot of horror movies where rich people were demonized to the point of being cartoon villains. They Live and Creepshow are good examples of that. But I do like how it kind of forces you to think about the ethics of this. This body was basically being kept alive, and all it took was a bit more serum for it to realize that it wanted to take back what was stolen from it. And like I said, apparently it was aware enough to be able to hear the doctor talk about how the serum works, so... Yeah, it makes you wonder if he was in pain that whole time as well. I also like the reveal that he was a freedom fighter when he was alive, and apparently that carried over and realizing that he had a purpose kept him going. So of course the doctor was played by Meatloaf, and he was great in this. He kind of reminds me of a low-key Jack Black. Regina was played by Black-Eyed Susan, who I don't know anything about, but I like that Meatloaf isn't the strangest name in this cast. She was great too, though. Joe was played by an actual football player, Franco Harris of the Pittsburgh Steelers. It explains why his acting was so flat. I don't know the other two actors either, but apparently the guy who played Adam was mostly a model, which isn't too surprising. He's pretty cute out of makeup and really does kind of look like David Bowie. The writer and director for this one was Richard Benner, who also wrote an episode of Friday the 13th, the series, and a couple episodes of Tales from the Dark Side. I guess that's about all I have to say about this one. Kind of a typical Monsters episode, simple but effective. Next up is The Legacy. See you then. His hands, they're so large.